Your name is Thornton. Mike Thornton. And technically, you don't exist. That's because, faster than a missile strike, you've gone from a government operative to a rogue agent without a country. Those who trained you are now hunting you, and your government has changed your status from agent to target. This is Alpha Protocol, the new espionage RPG from Obsidian Entertainment. And more so than even assault rifles and shotguns, the most effective weapon in this game is choice. Your choice, to be precise, and the decisions you make really determine what you'll experience in Alpha Protocol. This is a multifaceted action RPG with a complex plot and plenty of sneaking around in the shadows, but the game's interactive, branching narrative is definitely its strongest point. And unfortunately, it's only strong point. No sign of our new arrival? No sign of him yet. Careful, Mike. Truck coming in. And guards at the exit. Try to stay alive. I suppose Alpha Protocol is an RPG only in the clinical sense. You're certainly playing a role in this game, as Agent Thornton essentially becomes an on screen extension of your own persona. And of course, there's also the obligatory process of earning experience points and leveling up. But otherwise, this is very much a straightforward action game. Most of the time you'll be sneaking through levels and hacking into computer systems and shooting enemies in the head. And that is when the game's problems become apparent. Uh, it's not that the action and RPG sides of Alpha Protocol don't get along, uh, they've actually been integrated seamlessly and work really well together. It's just that the game's action elements are definitely its weakest point, and given the percentage of the experience they comprise, Alpha Protocol never really ascends beyond average and Always middling. personal items is quite routine. I wouldn't worry about that. But let's get down to the task at hand. I'm here to run you through the weapons training and test your accuracy. I think my gun is working just fine. Now, the problem isn't necessarily the combat itself, but its individual components. Your enemies sometimes act as though it's their first day on the job showing a degree of dim-wittedness which makes sneaking unnoticed through the game's environments less important than it should be. The combat encounters themselves also begin to gradually feel repetitive, as the game rarely deviates from what quickly becomes a formulaic approach to enemy engagement. And upgrading Thornton's abilities exacerbates this problem because you become virtually untouchable with the right stealth and weapon upgrades. As the occasionally bad enemy AI, the repetition, and the lack of balance might suggest, Alpha Protocol could have used a lot more polish. Visually, there isn't anything here to marvel over, and the environments strive so much to attain a sense of gritty realism that they end up forsaking imagination and memorability in the process. The game also suffers from its fair share of glitches, too. Throughout my experience, a boss froze out of my reach in a later level, and the game froze my system twice. There's nothing stealthy about getting off the couch to restart your console. But even with these complaints in mind, Alpha Protocol isn't bad. In fact, at times it's genuinely entertaining thanks to its player-driven narrative. Obsidian built the game around an elaborate system of interactive dialogue, similar to games like Mass Effect and Heavy Rain. You control Thornton's responses and decide whether to interact with the game's characters in a professional, joking, or aggressive tone. Your relationships with just about every character you meet depend entirely on your choice of words. And perhaps the most intriguing aspect of this system, it gives you total control over the game and the story. For example, an ally you made at an earlier level may provide critical intel in a future mission, or even an important boost to your abilities. Executing one person might make another want your head. Sometimes you'll even meet someone who references your past decisions and treats you a certain way because of them. Situations such as these make Alpha Protocol feel like an ever-evolving experience that could go in any direction depending on your actions and attitude. And combined with its system of ability upgrades and weapon customization, it also gives you the sense that there are countless ways to play Alpha Protocol, and that each experience could be different from the last. In fact, if it were better in other areas, Alpha Protocol's branching narratives and deep RPG elements would make the game worth playing several times through just to experience all the paths it has to offer and to put Thornton in different situations. You weren't kidding. Watch your back, they probably got guards on the way. 
these specs look like Halbeck targeting data tied into the radio tower. But at the end of the day, promiscuity and a deep system of interactive dialogue are the only aspects of the game that make it feel exceptional. Those who explore its many caveats will be intrigued by the game's branching story, but players who shoot first and question later won't be nearly as dazzled by Alpha Protocol. Looks like my radio's acting up, Westridge. Getting a lot of static. What, what, what are you doing? I give you guns. Yeah, I heard that line already. No, no. Mike, Mike. Hold yourself, not even this facility will be able to hold your ego. Looks like that's it for the physical evaluation. Now for the hard part. Tell me why you're here. Not everyone gets chosen for this line of work, but you volunteered. Usually we have to ask. I want to serve my country. And you think by being assigned here is the best way to do that? Give me a mission and I'll prove it. 